Hey. Hey. <laughs> Here I am with the one and only Ted Rubin, who is in Boston, Insta Boston. Hey, Ted, bring up the socks. Show them the socks. Oh. I got to just tell you guys. Okay, so when I first met Ted, it was online, like most of the other people I'm interviewing. And I was attracted to Ted for a lot of reasons. He's really cute. And he always posts these great pictures of his socks. And he especially posts these pictures of his socks on my favorite social media platform, Instagram. I had the pleasure of meeting Ted March 2014 at Social Media Marketing World. And yes, there's something going on behind us. We're at a restaurant. Um, and we met in person for the first time. And of course, I brought Ted a pair of fun socks. Yes, because that's what you do when you of meet course. Ted. So we are here today to talk about Instagram and talk about how Ted uses it for his business. And he is the only interview that you are going to see R to R because he's all about relationship to relationship. And here we are in person. I drove out here in the traffic because Ted said, I'm going to be in Boston. Let's do the interview here. So here we face are. Face to face. Face to face. All about that. We're trying a relationship, human to human. All right. So, so here we go. are. So, so Ted, tell everybody, first of all, how long have you been on Instagram? You know, that's hard to say. I'd probably say about a year. Um, I should have checked it if you wanted me to before. Yeah, no, that's fine. But, you know, I kind of ignored Instagram at first, just only because how many things do we all have to do? Right, and you're awesome on Twitter. There's so many yeah. things, and I yeah. was very involved in Pinterest, posting things, and I was using Path for a little while, because when I was at Collective Bias, we kind of use it as an intranet, and it was fun, and I could do some of the same things. But about a year ago, it might be a year and a half ago, I realized I was really missing the boat with Instagram. Yeah. Because Path just didn't give me the reach, it didn't give me the view into the people that I like to deal with, all the people I know, and it didn't give me the distribution and the voice that I'm getting on Instagram. So I quickly jumped over, okay. very quickly jumped off a path, and, and eventually just got away from it completely. And now I'm a total convert. Yeah, I see that you're a convert. I you're am. on it. It's good. And I even listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everybody, how are you using it? Like, what value do you see in it? And are well, you are you cross? promoting Instagram to Twitter or Facebook? Well, absolutely. But let me tell okay. you what I love about Facebook, about Instagram. Instagram. I talk to a lot of people and they ask me about social media and how do I do it and I don't have enough time. And I tell them, if you're getting involved in social media and you're new to it or you don't do it enough, even if you're on the other platform, get on Instagram. Best place in the world. Why? Because everyone complains, oh, oh my God, I don't know how to create enough content. You know how you create content with Instagram? Click, 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 <laughs> click, click. Content, 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 content. And then Instagram is a great platform to syndicate from. Right. So I take everything I put on, tip to, on on Instagram and I push it out to Tumblr. And by the way, all my posts on Tumblr come from Instagram. I don't go to Tumblr well, by let's itself. Let's stop there for a second because you are the only one that I'm interviewing that pushes to Tumblr, which is great. I don't push to Tumblr. So let's, you should, because Tumblr is such a visual environment, right, right. and there's I, also so many millennials on there right. that it's probably the only place I get my contact with them. Okay, so that's good to hear. I on one of my accounts, Subi Jewels, we do have a Tumblr account, and I push it from that. When I when I say I don't push to Tumblr, I don't push regularly. So talk about how you're getting added value from Instagram to Tumblr. Well, uh, let, let's just package it and everything. Okay. So I'm taking Instagram and I'm. I'm syndicating to Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Foursquare. I never go to Foursquare unless I'm sending something from, from Instagram. I rarely go to Tumblr except to answer or to reply to people unless I'm do, doing it from Instagram. And it syndicates so well because photos work everywhere. You can't right. do that with other platforms. Right. Now, let me ask you, are you doing that with every single post? Every single post. You are. Okay. So that's not exactly how I teach it. Okay. Only because I like to, to tell people that some of the content that you create on Instagram should be Instagram, you know, um, privy to this, the people that follow you on Instagram. So they feel like it's a special place. So they have to go back to see that content. I do talk about pushing it out to Facebook, pushing it out to Twitter, as long as it makes sense. For example, obviously you and I are going to take a picture after this interview and we're going to post it on Instagram. And it makes sense so much for both of us to share it to Twitter, partly because you and I both have the same handle mm -hmm. on Instagram that we do on Twitter. And a lot of people don't. So it's easy to push an at mention without having to reconfigure um, the at mention from Instagram. Am I allowed to disagree with you here? You totally are. Okay. So what I'm going to say is, unless you have a Facebook page that is about a whole nother topic mm -hmm. specifically, why don't push it out there? What I like to say is, don't try to get your people to only come to the place where you want them. You have to go to where they are. So look, I love Instagram. And if you're telling someone to build their following and just use Instagram, that's great. But if they have people that follow them on Facebook, and they don't want to go to Instagram, they don't use Instagram, they don't have Instagram, yeah. then they're missing that. 
Absolutely. And, and I just think that's so important. I believe in syndicate, syndicate, syndicate. Okay, so to that point, I'm agreeing with you, but because someone like me that posts twice a day on Instagram on my personal account and once on my feature accounts, I am not flooding my feed on You think twice Facebook. a day is flooding? I, I, I don't, I mean, I'll post sometimes five times a day. I don't think it's flooding. I'm well, giving people- are, a, Is it automatically set up for you to push? No, no, I do it manually. Okay. So I don't have to, and okay. there are some so, but, times where I don't. Okay. But in essence, 98% of the time I do, because first of all, there are people there that will miss it if it's only on the screen. And I've, I've had pushback on that. I've had people say, okay. why are you only publishing there? And I, but we want to see what you're doing now. Okay. It, 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 it's all, also a lot of this about how you train your audience or how you train the people you interact with. And you also have to listen to them. Yes, right. if you push it out and they start saying, hey, we don't like all those photos, then stop pushing it to Facebook. Right. A lot he's of making, it is about testing. Yeah, he's making a lot of great points here. I like that he's a little controversy to how I'm teaching it. Controversial or just has a different point of view. I should say that. I, I think, also want to make a point that yeah. I learned so much from you. I, I, I was mm -hmm. using hashtag Saki. And I changed it, which Jolcom, by the way, was the one who told, like, came up with that. But then, of course, I saw a lot of other people were right. using it, which is cool. Yeah. But then a lot of my stuff gets lost in it. And you gave me the idea. Start your own hash. Um, hashtag uh, hub. Hashtag hub. hub. Yeah. Which I do with Return on Relationship, R yeah. on R. Yeah. And now I have Ted Saki. So, but, so I have Ted with both Saki, Saki because Ted I want to be in everybody's. Right. And now you have your own. I have Ted Saki so I can send people just to see my people. I love that. So that's something he's learned. Um, so, so just let's just let's dial it and back. And I know like, I have much more. Than oh, you're so cute. So, um, so this is how Ted does it. It works for him, and I love that. And everyone's going to have a strategy that works differently for for them. And that's what you need to know. You purchased this course. It was a big investment. You are so lucky to be listening to Ted Rubin and hear about how he uses Instagram strategically. It works for him this way to push it out to Tumblr. Foursquare, Facebook, and Twitter. And that's a lot of syndication. And to his point, it's easy. He likes it. It's easy. He doesn't have to think gets, about what he's doing. It gets my name out there. And another point, away from the Facebook topic. Yeah. With the Tumblr and Foursquare, I would not be. I would not have the time or the inclination to publish right. that. But I have thousands of followers in those places, and now they get something to interact with and something to engage with without me having to take the time to go to those spots. Got it. So that's a really good point. I also have a Foursquare account with a lot of followers, and I'm not pushing out there. So I just learned something new from Ted because everyone always has something to learn. So I might just be pushing some of my Instagram pictures out to Foursquare. Ooh. Um, but but let's go back to the hashtag hub because so many of you are going to want to create your own custom hashtag because I always say the success is in the hashtag on Instagram and it's great to be curated in hashtags where a lot of people's eyes are such as hashtag Saki because he's doing these Sockies instead of selfies and when I messaged Ted and I and I did I said to him let's get you out of that whole big like huge grouping of socks because yours are just way cooler than a lot of the ones i see let's do your own hashtag hub and that's what he's talking and it was about great advice i um, love it. i love it and i'm trying to think about how i can do it with other things absolutely and then another good tip i got recently and it might have come from you i don't remember or i might have read it in other posts was to go back to all your old pictures and add five hashtags to them yes to make them more re relevant right. again and this goes to something that i talk about with my blog and a lot of my tweets is always reuse content. I repurpose, repurpose blog repurpose. posts. I, re, I, re, I reuse and I repurpose. So I go back and I take old blog posts and I republish them yep. as new with a little bit of change, a little bit of update, and I repurpose them. So now I've got the, this is a great idea yeah. how to take some yeah. of that Instagram content and do the same. Yeah, so let's go through that. So on Instagram, you can use up to 30 hashtags per post, and we talk about this in the modules, don't you fret. And what Ted's talking about is that it's smart and wise to keep your hashtags in groupings of six. I say five groupings of six because you get 30. So you can literally copy and paste from Evernote. I use notes on my phone and I use notes so that I don't make mistakes when I'm typing those hashtags. And I copy, I paste, to Ted's point, I refresh old posts that are way back when that did get a lot of engagement to bring them back to life. And you're gonna hear more about this in the course but I love that that's working for you. And then I test different things. I mean, to try, like, for a long time, all I was getting was likes on my post. Now I'm getting a lot more comments on my post. That's what now, you want. Now, yes. I've also, you know, there are things you learn, which I'm sure Sue goes through in a course, that if you don't tag someone, they don't, it's not like Facebook, where when someone comments on a post, and then when someone new comments, they get an alert. That doesn't happen in Instagram. Right, it, which, yes. Which it took me a while to learn. On your own post, if someone comments, you get a notification, but if you comment on someone else's post, you want to at mention them so they will get a notification.
education. That's exactly. what you're talking about. Yes. So that's really good to know. All right, Ted. So if you were going to give them one of your, like, you have so many tips. I love this. Um, like words of wisdom, words of advice from an expert who speaks all over the world teaching return on relationships. He's all about the real deal, the real thing, how to authentically be you and engage and rock your business. What would it be? Well, something I've been talking about for a while is looking people in the eye digitally. And it's like taking Dale Carnegie and, and bringing it into the digital age. And I like to say that how to, how to Win Friends and Influence People is the best social media book ever written. Mm. And it was written in 1936, and it's more relevant now than it was then. So first of all, buy the book, read it all the time, read it over and over. <laughs> I have it on my iPad, my iPhone, on my coffee table, you know, et, et cetera. But the other thing is uh, I have a book coming out this month called How to Look People on the Eye Digitally. Oh, I love it. And start doing that. Start answering people by name, commenting, having, don't just say thanks, say thanks to who they are. Right. Mention their names. And also, more important than anything, get started. Stop waiting for the perfect strategy. Right. Jump in right. and figure it out. That's so who I am. Yeah. That's such great advice. I, and, 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 and this is the number one thing that I teach throughout the whole theme of the course is the value of that engagement. The value of authentically commenting, engaging, looking them in the eye. I love this new book. You guys are so lucky that you're seeing him in action and you're going to go out and buy it. I know you are. You're going to say um, on the review that you saw this video and that's why you bought it. And by the way, the book is only 70 pages. I'm only doing short form books for now and I have one coming out every quarter. The next one is called um, The Age of Influence. And it makes it so you can read it in, in a short sit down. You don't That's have to awesome. worry about all the filler that comes in the middle of most of these books just to make them two to 300 pages. Great stuff, right? Okay, so we are going to just give a big shout out to Boston. Yep. Insta Boston. You hey, point Boston. Yahoo! We love Boston. Woo! And it's getting late and it's getting dark. <laughs> Thanks, Ted. My pleasure.